I've had the Wahoo Kicker now for just over a month, done about 20 workouts on it, and there is very, very little wrong with it at all, except there is not much of a challenge. Having done the original fitness test to establish how unfit on a bike I was, The only challenge is simply completing the workouts that I have scheduled each day and getting slightly better each time. There's no immediate challenge that I can look forward to the way when I'm running, for example, or obstacle course racing, I go out and actually compete. Even with the lockdown at the moment, I'm still doing virtual runs and going out and competing in a sense and picking up a medal accordingly. And in a way it's probably a good thing because if lockdown weren't on and I had a real bike and was actually out competing, I'd be getting completely destroyed right now. So I'm probably best off tucked away in here. But I have found an opportunity to compete in some small way. So that is coming up. First though, I just thought I'd review the bike. Five good things, five bad things. What do I like about it? What do I not? Number one, the build quality on this thing is superb. You'd kind of hope after a month nothing is falling off, but even so, it's just very well put together. The build quality is excellent, the finish on it is good, everything feels rock solid, nothing rattles, nothing squeaks, nothing's come loose, and it is getting used as well. I'm on it most days, Jen's using it, one of my kids uses it a lot. Sometimes it's getting ridden three times a day. And talking of other people using it, one of the great things about this, as opposed to my option two, which was to get the Wahoo Kicker and attach a regular bike to it, is that this can be adjusted for anybody to ride. And to change it from me at 6'6 to Jen at 5'6 is a 30 second exercise. And everything can be altered. The height of the bars, the seat obviously, but also how far forward the bars are, how far back the seat is, even the standover height and the crank length can be altered. So, huge amount of variation. It means that other people can use it, so I'm getting more value for money. Now, number three, I thought the tilt was gonna be a gimmick. Turns out it is, but it's a very, very cool one. Put simply, the bike will go downhill, and the bike will go uphill. And this makes a huge difference. You're probably thinking, what difference can it possibly make? Well, it does. If you have a, an app you're using and it sets up a climb for you, the bike tips up in the air, you can't help but just stand up and attack that climb. It just motivates you forwards. In the same way as when you get to the top of a climb, the bike will tip forward as they're going downhill, the resistance will come off so you can spin up faster, and it really does feel like you're plowing downhill as much as it can do in a garage. The up and the down, it just works in your head. Now this one's a bit boring, customer service. I've contacted Wahoo three times by email and they have been brilliant each time. They've responded quickly within 24 hours and there was no problem with the bike that meant I had to contact them. It was simply me not bothering to read the manual properly and being rather lazy and just contacting them instead. Either way, it works. They are very, very good, very responsive, no problems from them whatsoever. And that's reassuring to know that if anything does ever go wrong, I can jump on an email and somebody will help me out. So customer service, very good. And the last thing I love about the bike is a big one. It's not actually the bike so much, so it's more what I've done with the area around the bike. For a habit to be stuck with, it needs to adhere to a few requirements. It needs to be obvious, it needs to be attractive, it needs to be easy to do and rewarding. So obvious number one, it needs to be in your face. It's why they stick the shitty food on the end of the supermarket aisles. It's just there and you want it. This needs to be something that I cannot miss. And I've kind of solved that problem by spending £3,000 on it. It is seared into my brain as a thing that exists. So obvious is taken care of. It needs to be attractive. Is it attractive now? I painted the wall blue, I've got my little shelf up, I've got my TV screen for the app I'm using, I've got the fan set up on a remote control, my little table with my bits and pieces on it. As much as it can be, given it's stuck in my garage, it is an attractive might be the wrong thing to say. It's a nicer environment to sit in than it was when I first had the bike. It kind of feels like this is where I do my cycling. So visually, Mentally, it's not a bad place to come. 
and it needs to be easy. If it's a hassle, if it's inconvenient, it's so, so easy to put it off. And I've made it as easy as I possibly can here. Everything is set up. I have an iPhone dedicated to running the app on that just stays in here. I don't have to hunt for an iPhone each time I come in. My water bottle, my heart rate monitors are hanging on a hook down here so I can grab them and go. I've got my Amazon Alexa thing so I can play my podcast. As I say, the fans on the remote control. Everything is simple. I just stumble into the garage, jump on the bike and I'm off. I even made sure that my shoes don't have laces. I don't have time for laces. On the bike and off I go. The environment I have made is as good as I can get it for creating a situation where I'm going to stick with the hobby, the habit of riding the bike on a regular basis. And it just makes it a pleasurable thing to come and do. Pleasurable. It makes it a not unpleasurable thing to come and do. Okay, so the bad things, and there aren't many. I'm genuinely very, very happy with it. The first one is they've made it very bike-like, and that's great. I mean, it feels like you're on a bike, as much as I know what that feels like. I don't even own a road bike, but it, it feels like a bicycle. However, that also brings with it some disadvantages. For example, there's a water bottle cage down here. Well, it doesn't need to be down here out the way. I don't need aerodynamics when I'm sat still. Consequently, I keep my water bottle on my little stand up here. The same my iPhone. I've actually bought an iPhone holder so it can be up here. I have my remote control sitting on my stand as well. It would have just been nice if they put some sort of a little shelf, some sort of bracketry up here where you could attach things. I get they want it to look like a bike, but when that comes to the expense of it being easy and hassle-free, I'm not sure that's a worthwhile compromise. Turbo trainer lag. This is not really specific to the Wahoo kicker bike. I'm told all turbo trainers do this. There is a lag between when whatever app you're using tells you the resistance is going to go up and that resistance being applied to the bike. And if you're doing something like a one minute or a one and a half minute increased level of resistance, it doesn't matter if it takes a couple of seconds to get there. But on a sprint where suddenly it says, okay, you're now doing 550 watts for 10 seconds, if it spends five of those 10 seconds getting it up to 550 watts, half of the benefit is lost. I'm not sure why there's a lag, because when I use the gears and change manually, the change on resistance is instantaneous. It's only when I'm running in erg mode and letting the app control the resistance. Maybe future software updates will solve that. It would be handy. It's not a big deal, but it's mildly inconvenient on those short, fast changes from sprint to relax, sprint to relax. The bike is constantly playing catch up. Now this one's a bigger one. There are buttons on the handlebars. One, two, three, four, five, six buttons that do various things. Outside of using an app, they'll control the tilt and so on. But in the app, they control things annoyingly. And it's quite hard to avoid pressing them by mistake, especially these ones on the inside of the hoods here. Often I'll change hand position and hit them by mistake. And then it will change it from, for example, being in the automatic erg mode to going into one of the different levels of resistance, which I don't want to do, it messes up the app. I contacted both Wahoo and also Sufferfest and said, is there any way these buttons can be programmed to do something more useful? For example, mute the music or bring up the settings menu and toggle through it. Not at the moment. It's a pity. In fact, it's so annoying that I tend to pull them out and unplug them to avoid them hassling the system when I'm riding, which is a bit of a waste. It would be really cool if they could do something constructive and useful. At the moment though, they don't. That's not good. And talking of the techie stuff, this could just be me, but I cannot get my Garmin Fenix 6X to link up to the bike properly. I've asked the bike to talk to the watch and that works. My watch says, yes, we've detected your Wahoo kicker bike as a sensor. But when I go to set it to time an indoor bike ride, it doesn't detect the Wahoo as being a source of information for that activity. Now I've even tried going into the cadence and power meter settings on the watch and said, find one of those devices, thinking it might find the bike, but it doesn't. It only detects the bike as the bike and then doesn't use the bike in the bike setting. Very annoying. Can't figure it out. The solution, which is a bit of a hassle, 
is to record my activity as an indoor bike ride with nothing other than time spent and heart rate, have Sufferfest record the actual results from the bike, and then collate the two together manually by typing into my Garmin Connect app how far I've gone, from which it calculates the speed, and you get the idea, it's faffing about. Could just be me. If you know how that works, please comment below. And the last one, as I said at the beginning, I like a challenge, even though I might do very badly at that challenge, I don't care, I wanna have a go at something, I wanna see how well I'm doing. And I've done the test, I've done the 4DP Sufferfest test, I've done the ramp test, all very exciting. But now, day to day, it's just training and getting fitter and getting better. And I can feel that I am, but it's all very gradual and progressive. It would be nice to have an immediate challenge that I could just do and see a result from. And I found one because Cycling Weekly magazine, a magazine that I take on a regular basis, my neighbour who's a keen cyclist showed me, are currently running a how many watts can you produce as a maximum burst competition thing. I had a look, now the guy at the magazine got 1400 watts, that's their top score so far. And that didn't seem miles away from the 1200 odd watts that I'd got on my five second output when I very first did the 4DP test. Maybe I could now do 1500. So 1500, it sounds like a nice round number. I have no idea whether that's achievable or not, but I thought today, it's a bit of a rest day from the bike, I'll have a go, can I get 1500 watts and enter the competition? Who knows? Um, I might do terribly, I might enter and other people do far better, or I might enter and it might be quite respectable, we will see. So the plan is to do a little warm up on here, when I'm feeling fresh, go for a crazy blast, and then we see what we come up with, hopefully, 1500 and something. Um, challenge time. Been doing a little warm now for several eight minutes. The idea now is to slowly build up to a sprint. Um, Go do a few warm up sprints at sort of 75% my maximum effort. And then when I feel like it, I'm gonna go for it. I can't imagine I'm going to get more than three or four goes at a flat out sprint before I'm exhausted, so we will see. Can you uh, come to the garage? I need you to weigh the bike down. Yeah. Cool. Kids good for something. Okay, here can you go. Oh, come on, 1483. Josh! Okay, 1483. That's too close to 1500 not to get 1500 today. Pause. Stop. Save boy. Come on. 15.23. It wasn't pretty. We don't care about pretty. 15.23. Oh, jeez. 